Well, I would just say for the homeschooling community and those who are even contemplating it, it's definitely worth it. We've both greatly, you know, appreciated that kind of upbringing. It's it's changed our lives for the better from what it could be. So um, definitely encourage you that it's it's worth trying out. It's worth doing. And uh, there's always it's, it's it became a brighter potential for us. Welcome to Homeschool Talks, a podcast by HSLDA. This is a show about all things homeschooling, from practical tips to inspiring stories and everything in between. We're so glad you've joined us today, and we hope you enjoy the program. Good morning. I'm Jim Mason, Vice President of Homeschool Legal Defense Association, and this is another episode of Homeschool Talks. Joining me this morning are two masters. In fact, they are Lego masters, Mark and Steven Erickson. So uh, Mark and Steven, before we get into the Lego master bit, what in the world are you guys doing on my Homeschool Talks podcast? Well, just so happens that both me and Mark have been homeschooled our entire lives. So uh, yeah, it uh, makes total sense. <laughs> so tell, tell me about yourselves. Where'd you grow up? Uh, how many siblings do you have? What was your homeschool experience like? Well, we have uh, one other sibling, our sister, Julia. She's married and, uh, you know, often she's happy as ever. Um, but we grew up in Florida. Um, our mom was a, uh, a teacher for a long time. She was a music teacher for, uh, for elementary school. Um, but uh, she decided that uh, she was going to teach us. Um, and I'm glad she did because it turns out I'm seriously dyslexic. Mark, maybe a little bit, but me quite a lot. Uh, so that was extremely helpful. Um, but we spent our childhood in Florida, about 10 years there, and about 15, 16 years, give or take, um, up here in the Atlanta area. So um, that's kind of the only places we've ever really been. But yeah, um, I think that... Uh, yeah, um, we both really appreciate the homeschooling lifestyle because you have a little bit more free time to do creative pursuits. Oh, yeah. So that's where the Lego Masters part comes into play. Mm -hmm. So you guys basically played your whole life growing up. For about 20 years. We, years. Yeah. <laughs> we spent a lot so of time. You, you were homeschooled playing Legos. Is that <laughs> yeah, it? Yeah. Well, uh, we both have college you, degrees. We so both it's not like college. college. Oh, yeah. serious. What, that is one of the great joys of, of homeschooling and being a homeschool advocate, talking to people all over the country. You know, pe children um, are so creative and artistic. And if you let them kind of go in their own direction, who knows? They might grow up to be Lego masters. So how did that begin back in your homeschooling days? I mean, I imagine you started actually, I mean, I, I just want to point out to you guys that, you know, you're, you're like in your late 20s and yes. you know, <laughs> Legos are still toys. <laughs> why are you, why are you still playing with Legos? <laughs> okay. So uh, why Legos? Um, first of all, the medium was really awesome. Everybody's grown up with Legos. It's just one of those toys everyone's really had here in America and, you know, and across the world. But uh, for us, we 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 kept building, and we found out that there are other people who also had kept building, and uh, we found there's a big Lego community, and that was a huge springboard for us for uh, for Lego. We found out look at all this amazing stuff. We saw like the potential, um, and uh, we found there were contests online. You could win Lego sets for free <laughs> if you just submit a really cool model. Their whole Lego convention. Their whole Lego conventions. They were huge. Thousands of people would come. Just it's like an art show. Uh, people, thousands of people would come all across the, the area just to come and see these amazing creations. We would go to these shows and we had an amazing time. And then we started winning awards. So it was just a, a long like uh, climb the whole way. Um, but uh, it was these conventions and a large social media presence that Lego Masters uh, eventually found us. And um, through that, we got on the show. So that's interesting. So you guys, uh, you said you both uh, have graduated from college. What did you study in college? Uh, graphic design, that makes sense. And, that makes sense. and welding, which doesn't make sense. <laughs> well, it kind of makes it sense. Me, yeah. <laughs> I suppose it makes sense. Uh, you're oh, sort yeah. of welding things together. So mm -hmm. Lego Masters found you guys. That's nice to be sought out. How did they, you know, what, what's the deal with that? What is Lego Masters? And they sought you out for what purpose? Yeah, so actually uh, it was for season one and we actually appeared on season two, but for season one, they called us and we're like, hey, we're looking for great Lego builders. We saw all your content that you posted online 
And we we both been posting Lego creations online for about ten years mm -hmm. now. Almost a thousand pictures over here. Yeah, more than that over there. So plenty of Lego things out there for people to discover. And so they they wanted us on the show. We thought it was a joke at first because like Lego Masters. What's this? This is it's a prank. A, this is a prank, obviously. Yeah. But um, no, it, it was real. And we were both way too busy at the time to do season one. But by the time season two rolls around the next year, we both had a very free schedule, and we're like, hey, we could totally do it this year. So. It ended up working out. We got on the interview process, and then um, we uh, survived that because 12,000 people applied for season two. Mm -hmm. oh, and um, we uh, and managed to be uh, two of the 24 people that made it on the show. So that was quite pretty, a feat on its own. It was a <laughs> mathematical miracle, basically. So, mm -hmm. so I, I uh, sadly am not a follower of this is a TV show, I take it? Exactly, mm -hmm. on Fox, yes. On Fox, a Fox TV show. I am not a follower of the Lego Masters TV show. I did look at a couple of uh, clips and episodes uh, before getting here. So moms and dads out there listening, you're going to want to get your kids in on this because these guys are incredible. They're amazing. <laughs> They've managed to make a, a sort of career out of playing, <laughs> which that's a great thing. So a good, a good friend of mine is a, is a, is a, is a, psychi a psychologist named um, Dr. Peter Gray. And he has, he, he actually is a scholarly, uh, I guess, reviewer in a journal called the Journal of Play. <laughs> and he's a great proponent of play. So season two, Lego Masters, how did that progress? And what, 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 what do you have to do on this Lego Masters show? Well, there are 12 episodes, and each episode has a totally unique challenge, right? So you, you're given a big prompt, a very important prompt. Maybe build a Lego remote control car or build something from a hanging brick or build a tower that has to be a minimum of four feet tall or a giant hat, a giant Lego hat or something like that. And um, after you build it, after you accomplish whatever the challenge is, there's usually a second part, like a strength challenge or something. Um, after that, the judging takes place. There's two top teams that they pick out. And then there's two bottom teams that they pick out. And whoever is in the top two, one of those is the, decided to be the winner. And who's in the bottom, one of those is decided to be the loser. So it's very tense, very exciting. Very competitive. Very competitive. Yeah. You're usually um, given a time limit anywhere from like yeah. eight to 12 hours per episode. Which is usually, insane. <laughs> except for the finale, a 24 hour build challenge. Mm -hmm. so. so this is a little bit like the baking shows, right? Where the different Very teams smart. have to, you know, they're given an assignment and the judges go around and taste the stuff. And you guys, mm -hmm. in, in your case, they judge the artistic quality and the strength and did you meet the, the goals? Mm -hmm. So so on the show, I mean, behind you right there, I see a, you know, a, a very non-traditional uh, assortment of, uh, of Legos. And I want to get into the legalistic uh, qualifications that you guys, I mean, I, I think you guys probably don't actually qualify as Lego masters when I look at the assortment of, uh, of Legos behind you. Um, but I guess, you know, they overlooked it. They, they apparently didn't review your workshop. How did they, what, where did you get uh, materials for the show? How did they provide you with those? Oh, they were supplied by Lego, uh, the Lego group, the Lego group itself. Uh, they were mm -hmm. shipped in and uh, there were 5 million pieces total <laughs> we were allowed to work with, which is sounds like a lot, but the model had to be sorted down by the halfway, at, at least halfway through the show, we would have run out of pieces. Um, but yeah, 5 million elements to work with. Um, and they were actually, yeah, they, there's so many pieces that it was, I think it was 20 pallets of Lego. Something like that, yeah. And um, <laughs> it, they were all shipped in through Savannah, Georgia, because it was filmed in North Atlanta. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it was just like that kind of volume. I, you never really see that no, in it, one place. Several <laughs> like tractor trailers, uh, trucks worth of Lego. It was insane to see that, yeah. So for those who can see the uh, backdrop there and, and will know just sort of how I don't know, unorthodox <laughs> you guys actually are. Why don't you explain what, I mean, I think you probably know what I'm talking about. What do you, what, explain to our listeners and viewers just exactly why you guys are so off base. Okay, so <laughs> we, we do um, Lego, in, a lot of Lego collections are simply put in a Rubbermaid tub and that's the end of it. But um, mm -hmm. we have gone uh, one step further and sorted it by color. Yep. So we have it by, you know, you got the red, the greens, the blues, they're all organized oh, in uh, just uh, shoebox size, like Sterilite bins. And um, it's it's, a, it's still a 
fairly barbaric way of sorting your Lego. Yeah, um, a lot of Lego pros, people are really into stuff, um, the adult fans of Lego, mm -hmm. they sort it very meticulously. Oh, However, yeah. we build so often and we build so large that sorting meticulously would take too much time, an astronomical amount of time. Mm -hmm. So in order to expedite the process, we uh, have a slightly simpler sorting system, which you can see behind us here, just a lot of Lego back there. Mm -hmm. A lot of Lego sorted by colors. I don't mm -hmm. know. I'm going to have to talk to my producers about getting, you know, guests that actually follow the rules. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we, we our own rules. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> typical homeschoolers, you make it up as you go and you make it fit your, your own style. Really mm -hmm. good. Um, so how did how did your homeschool background, do you think, uh, help you get into the Lego masters? And now that you're like stars and masters of the universe, um, <laughs> how, how does your homeschool background help you? Oh, first of all, the, the freedom to just enjoy the creative process, the freedom to um, spend time on things that you really love. Our school schedule was significantly uh, more efficient than something you'd see in the public school system. Or private school. Yeah, any other private school. Traditional school system. Plenty of time. Our friends who were in the school system were extremely jealous of like how much time we had, how much time we had to just explore creative outlets and fun things. Um, and our homeschooling process was very creative too. Um, our mom was really ahead of time. She would actually, she would do unit studies and she would, okay, here's a subject, we'll study it for like a month or something. Um, and uh, whether it's like, you know, zoology or geology or, 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 or like states or something, you know, like geography or whatever, um, she would like, hey, what do you guys want to learn? Sometimes like, well, how do you make chocolate bars? Let's learn about that. You know, we could choose what we, we learned. Um, aside from the important stuff like math, obviously, and uh, the basics. yeah, the basics. And then uh, from there, we could just learn. So we were encouraged to come up with something cool, and then we could explore it. So I think that really laid a lot of good foundations for coming up with a cool idea, a cool theme, a cool model, and then just exploring that and making it even more um, like interesting and you know uh, advanced as we could. And original, right? And original. You want to. Have to be original if you want to stand out on the internet. Uh, that's super important. So, yeah, I'd say there was a lot of foundation laid by our homeschooling, uh, homeschooling, you know, lives. Yeah, you both seem to uh, have a, a lot of a lot of self confidence, and and, a, and a, you present in a very winsome manner. And I imagine that's a product uh, of your parents, and especially your mom, uh, mm -hmm. building that into you over uh, by allowing you to kind of seek your own interests. That's just such a great thing about homeschooling that many people overlook. It's not just another little regimented school where you, you know, you have bells go off every hour and lines to and fro and you have to raise your hand to go to the bathroom. Uh, kind of a different world out there. And so for any of you who are considering homeschooling um, yourselves, look at these guys. I mean, they're still playing as a, you know, and they're still having fun. And I think there was some money changed hands. What was, what happened there at the end of this Lego Masters thing? So not only did we get the title, the official title of Lego Masters, um, although that term gets thrown around a bit, um, I, I would refer to the other contestants as Lego Masters as well. Um, just offhand, I would call them that. But the official title of Lego Masters goes to us, me and Mark, uh, plus a giant trophy, which was really cool. That's, that's coming. That'll be here very soon. Um, and $100,000, uh, which, we, which we split. Oh, so. uh, well. I guess that's okay. Yeah, it's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and so a hundred grand for being on TV. I mm -hmm. mean, it was kind of stressful. The little bit I watched, it is like those baking shows where, I mean, they, they have the dramatic pause and oh, yeah. before they, before they drum the guy off and, <laughs> <laughs> woo, and you guys made it right to the end. That, that, that's pretty cool. So is there any like real money in um, Legos going forward? Some, yeah. I got this one. Um, basically, uh, Steve and I both work at a, a large store that sells exclusively Lego. And part of our job is, you know, just basic retail. But the other part is um, we both build massive construction projects for people who need them. Like, for example, we're working on a large airplane for an airline uh, uh, company that mm -hmm. hired us to build it. So and we've done a number of different projects before that also kind of helped us. Uh, have that extra credentials for Lego Masters. We've been doing this for several years. And so, um, you know, that is a solid line of work. We're both doing that. Stephen basically retired from welding to do this. 
Yeah, right. So, well, to go back to you know, it's, yeah. there is there is a market. For, it's a very uh, it's kind of a niche market, but at the same time, we've made it work because it's something we love to do and something we're pretty good at. So mm -hmm. uh, it's it's definitely a viable career option. I think as the as the pandemic and everything happened, um, more people got into Lego. Oh, and it has yeah. a bigger audience than ever before because people were at home. They wanted something to do. They buy a Lego set. They get back into it, and now it's. It's really skyrocketed from even being the largest toy maker in the world. It's now even more so. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty amazing. Well, let me tell you a, a little anecdote from my own life about uh, COVID and Legos. My uh, oldest daughter, who's about your age, is a nurse at our local hospital, and she volunteered to work in the COVID unit. Mm -hmm. And after a little bit of, uh, of that, she moved back into our house because it was just so isolating and just needing to be around folks, you know, was a pretty big deal. So she worked, she, she moved back in, she continued working in the COVID unit. And then um, this Christmas, two days before Christmas, my whole family, seven children and four grandchildren were heading to our house. They all arrived on December 23rd. And she kind of, when I got home from work, she called us into the, her bedroom and said, I think I might have COVID. And everybody's just arriving, right? So she, uh, sneaked out and went and got tested and sure enough she got it came back positive and then everybody left <laughs> you know we, so we had we had we had christmas at for like three hours at home no. uh, with, with the whole family mm. um but here's 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 the can I, I i'm getting to it i'm getting to it you know <laughs> be patient <laughs> my uh son who is is not a lego master but a big big time lego guy um, you know, in a in a regular sort of way, not crazy sort of way like you guys. Um, bought her <laughs> a Lego R two D two with like four thousand pieces, right. and so I think that's right. Is that right? Four thousand. Yes. I thought that many. I thought that many. Yeah, that's a lot of pieces. So for like four days while she's isolating in her bedroom, recovering from a mild bout of COVID, she put together R two D two, and and now it, 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 so. It happened over Christmas, so now we have like every commercially available massive Star Wars uh, Lego set. <laughs> there you go. Around our house. <laughs> um, so, it, tell tell me tell me what your plans are for the future. Are either of you married? Kids? Nope, we're both still uh, single. Both still single. Eligible <laughs> bachelors. Uh, so li listen up out there, um, <laughs> these these two guys. You know they're uh, they're they're pretty attractive and. Uh, <laughs> And they're they're apparently making you know making good on uh, on Legos, so uh, you know you can drop us an email and I'll make sure you. Can... <laughs> uh, <laughs> no. uh, moving forward, um, we're doing some pretty cool stuff. We have some custom Lego sets that we designed uh, through the store we work at. That's really fun. Uh, I actually shameless plug in. I hate to do this. I actually wrote a book. Oh no! Hold it up so we can uh, see it. The inner workings. Oh, it's a little blurry. Sorry about that. The inner workings of a Lego mind. Oh my! Right, about five hundred uh, pictures in here. I go through some of my older models. I go through, through my newer ones. Talked about what I learned. So this has been a really fun project. It's it's done quite well. Um, there's some models I never put online as well in here. There's some un, uh, never before seen stuff. Uh, my mom helped me out a ton with this. Print self printed, self published. So thank you to her. Um, but yeah, that's available on Amazon, also my website. And uh, Mark, you made some cool t-shirts, a couple other things. Yep, I, I design t-shirts for um, the store that we work at. Mm -hmm. I do them on my own website and Steven's website. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, we, we have all sorts of, we have way too many projects going oh, on. Yeah. <laughs> but um, we're really enjoying it and uh, just kind of in, enjoying what we do and still having a great time. So oh, yeah. At some point, you guys suggested that what you're actually engaged in might be elevated to the level of art. Oh yeah, uh, we, I would definitely, uh, I would definitely argue that one for sure. Um, and there's a reason, like you know, you can take a wooden product and you can turn it into a toy, or you can build it into an amazing structure or a ship or something like that. Sculpture. So a sculpture or whatever. Or same is true for uh, a lot of stuff. Lego can be raw materials for uh, an artistic medium. I would say um, you just go online, look up a couple of the blogs that um, only upload Lego and you can see some just absolutely stunning work. There's also um, The Art of the Brick. He's a published artist. He's got his gallery in New York. He's extremely like successful in that line. Um, so yeah, I would definitely say that Lego, it's not only a toy, it's a very playful 
form of art. Let's just say that, a very playful form of art. And uh, I would definitely encourage everybody to, uh, to find your own style, you know, make your own stuff. You know, don't be scared to get away from those uh, instructions too much. Yeah, I would say that once, like, Lego kits are mm -hmm. fun and awesome, and that's, oh, yeah. that's more or less a toy. It really is, if we're being honest. But once you get off the beaten path of the instructions, mm -hmm. I think that even if it's something small and just for fun, that's actually a form of art, if you think about it. You're being creative. You're having to imagine what you want to build and kind of execute it in the same way that you would sketch or draw or mm -hmm. paint. So um, if you kind of elevate that, if you get really good at sketch, sketching or drawing or painting, that becomes like higher. It's like you're actually really working at that. And so if, if we're to this level, we're Lego masters, I think it, it, at, at that point it's classified as an art form. It as art in a way. I, I don't know. I think it does. Yeah. Well, very good. Listen, mm -hmm. I, I really enjoy talking to people who are passionate about what they do and kind of throw themselves into it. And you guys, you guys seem to actually be having a lot of fun doing what you do. And um, um, why don't you just let everybody know where they can find your swag? Um, you got a book. It's called What the Inner Workings of a Lego Mind. Nailed it. It's on Amazon and my website. It's the same. Now what's uh, your website? You can look up. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's uh, brotherstephenbuilds.com. I also have my uh, Instagram, um, Brother Steven 100. Flickr has the most pictures. That's uh, Brother Steven just on Flickr. Um, how are you, Mark? Yeah, I'm uh, Mark of Fallworth.com. That's my Lego pen name of yeah. sorts. Yeah. And um, you can just, you actually, if you just Google Mark of Fallworth Lego, you'll get thousands of results. He's so, very popular yeah. on the community. Let's so, just say that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> or even, you can, I think now you can even type you in probably do that for Mark me. Erickson Lego or even. Steven Erickson Lego at this Probably, point. Yeah. You can see Lego Masters results and stuff that we've done on social media. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, definitely uh, look those things up. If you like Lego stuff, if you like artistic things, it's very interesting. Well, very good. Um, give you guys the, the last word. Anything you need to say to the homeschooling community, the Lego community, the uh, ignorant community like me? What, 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 what's, what's your final thoughts? Well, I would just say for the homeschooling community and those who are even contemplating it, it's definitely worth it. We've both greatly, you know, appreciated that kind of upbringing. It's it's changed our lives for the better from what it could be. So, um, definitely encourage you that it's it's worth trying out. It's worth doing, and uh, there's always it's, it's it became a brighter potential for us. So, uh, definitely um, shout out to that. And uh, you got anything to say to you? Uh, just. Don't ignore potential, you know, don't ignore uh, a spark, you know, I mean, a pile of Lego can turn into an amazing piece of art, you know, it's, uh, you know, don't, uh, don't undercut yourself, you know? Well, that's a great word to end on. Young adults out there, follow your dreams. Uh, don't quit just because nobody else is doing it. Um, be creative. Um, and those of you who uh, are considering homeschooling, just consider what it can mean for your kids. It's such a, it's such a good thing. Um, and these guys are, are great uh, ambassadors of homeschooling and of Legos as well. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, Stephen and Mark Erickson, Lego Masters have been my guests. Um, if you can find out more about Homeschool Legal Defense Association by visiting our website and Facebook page, um, hslda.org, you can find other podcasts of interest and helpful webinars help to get started, help to continue homeschooling, interesting stories about legal things and legislative stuff. Uh, so make sure you stop by hslda.org. Uh, thanks again, Mark and Steven Erickson. Thanks, Jim. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. A lot of fun. <laughs> Today's episode is made possible by HSLDA's Generation Joshua program. Do you have a student who wants to make a difference in our nation? Generation Joshua empowers teens to make the most of their citizenship through local clubs, immersive simulations, online courses, and real-life campaign experiences. For more information, visit generationjoshua.org. That's generationjoshua.org. Thanks for listening to this episode of Homeschool Talks. If you enjoyed this conversation, leave a review to let us know what you think. To hear more conversations like this one, be sure to subscribe to this podcast or head on over to hslda.org slash podcast for more inspiring stories and awesome ideas about homeschooling. That's all for today. We hope you enjoyed the program and we'll see you next time.